So today we're going to pick up where we left off from yesterday. We're talking about dye hybrid because I want to make sure that you have a really good understanding of this because your homework does include it. So let's get our minds right and let's get back to Look this. I I find it in my basket. Like <laughs> Hold on, because you really need this. All right. So yesterday we talked about dye hybrid. Dye hybrid mean. Raji. I'm sorry, Raj, I can't hear you because I got a lot of audience talking. Go ahead again. Two different traits. Good. So, in this instance, we're talking about a guinea pig with rough um, coat, um, is smooth over, a, a, excuse me, dominant over a smooth coat, and a black fur is dominant over a white fur. Parent one has the genotype dominant R, dominant R, dominant B, recessive B. What is parent one's phenotype? Raise your hand and tell me. I know we did this yesterday, but Simon, tell me. Rough coat with black fur. Okay? Parent two has dominant R, recessive R, dominant B, recessive B. Chappie? Um, rough coat with black fur. Rough coat with black fur. What I want you to notice is both parents look alike but they have totally different genotypes. Understanding? Okay, so now we're going to show a cross between the parents um, that have this, and we're gonna give the genotypes, we're gonna break this down, but the way that this happens, I'm gonna move this little thing out the way. So the first thing we need to do, because we have to fill out these boxes, and we do not fill out these boxes by just taking these and putting these here. These are all going to be something that is Hair. So what happens is we take one of the parents, and there's two ways we can do it. Over here, I'm going to give you the two ways, and then you decide which way is better for you. But look at this first before you do anything. So this is figuring out this new Punnett square of dihybrid. So you take the parent's genotype, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. And we kind of make a smiley face with it. What we do is we do, or actually I would like to call it a donut, which is what I bring you on Friday. All right. So we take this and we link it to that. And this is not, well, not Friday, Thursday. And we have dominant R, recessive R. Does everyone see that? No. I'm telling you what we have to do. We're going to take the first one. And we link it to the last one, okay? And then we take this is our dominant B. Got it so far? Yes, ma'am. All right. We have to link everything. So we took this one with this. She said she was playing. Oh, okay. She was playing with it. No, I'm talking about her. Come on, stay with me. <laughs> We're now going to take, I want to break it down so that you all understand. So we take the first one with the last one. We take the second one with the, actually, let me back up. It's all, it's all going to equal the same, but I want to, we'll take the first one with the last one. We'll take the first one with the second to last one. So now we have dominant R, dominant B. Okay. Excuse me. Ten seconds. All right. My group that had. Excuse me. My group that had this. Oh my God, I gotta sleep. <laughs> Excuse me. Gosh. All right. This column, which would be Drinker's group. Dominant R, recessive R. Dominant R, because you had R and R, you have the dominant R. Recessive R with what color? Dominant B, dominant B. This one. Dominant R, dominant R. Dominant R, dominant R. Dominant B, recessive B. 
Troy, I sit here and you talking. That's not Troy. Uh, thank you, Rosalind, because I didn't know he hired a lawyer. Sorry. Troy, was that you? All right. Do you have a rush on you? I don't. It has have a pencil. All right. Troy, just get up and come and get it. All right. Um, And then lastly. Dominic R. Okay, good. For my group that had this row, which is 80s Babies Group. Uh, we, we got, um, <laughs> uh, Dominant R, Recessive R. Dominant B, Recessive B, Drika, I know that's you. What I do? Dominant. Talking. I didn't even talk. Be quiet. Yeah, Dominant R. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, here we got dominant R Okay. This group. We got this right. Give me these two. Starting with this one. Dominant R. Oh, oh, made it too big. Recessive R. Okay. This one. Make sure you're filling yours in if you haven't already. Dominant R, and All right, my next group back there. Fernandez? Dominant R, Dominant R. Recessive B, Recessive B. Second one, somebody else. Brandon, Lil Tay, or Shana? Dominant R, Dominant R. Uh huh. Dominant B, Recessive B. Very good. Right here. Shh. This group, uh, Roger's group, Madison's group, Janie. Chappie, come sit right here. Dominant R, recessive R. Okay. And then. Very good. Anyone have any questions about this? All right, then we move down because we have to look at the different possibilities. So this is a lot going on in here. That means they have a lot of possibilities of their children coming out a whole bunch of ways. Remember, the purpose of a Punnett square, Troy told us, is to look at the chance or the probability of offsprings. So therefore, what we what the easiest way to do it is just take the first one and write down that as it because when some repeat. So we'll just go through and when it repeats, we'll just put a tally mark next to the one that is repeating. All right. So here. This one did not repeat. Did this one repeat? Yes. 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 So, so far, we have two. We have that one there and that one there. And did this one repeat? Yes. Okay, so there's two for that one. Make sure you're writing. So far, one. Dominant R, recessive R. Dominant B, only one for that. Dominant R, recessive R. Dominant B, recessive B. There's another one. Dominant R, recessive R. Dominant B, dominant B. There's another one for that. Dominant, dominant, recessive, recessive. We don't have that yet. Does everyone we'll see what I'm doing? Oh, yes. We don't. We have it now. Dominant R, dominant R, dominant B, recessive B. There it is. We have that. Dominant R, dominant R, recessive, recessive. I'm here, in case you don't know where I am. Dominant R, dominant R, dominant B, recessive B. I'm in the last row. Dominant R, recessive R, recessive B, recessive B. We don't have that. That extra talking in the back stop. Dominant R, recessive R. Dominant B, recessive B. Dominant R, recessive R. Recessive B, recessive B. And then the last one, dominant R, recessive R. Dominant B, recessive B. Right here. So far, so good? All right. So then, what's the phenotype for dominant R, dominant R, recessive B, recessive B? I'm, I'm sorry, dominant B, recessive B. What's the phenotype for this? 
Rough coat, black fur. What's the phenotype, um, Keelan, for dominant R, dominant R, dominant B, dominant B? Rough coat with black fur. What's the phenotype for dominant R, recessive R, dominant B, recessive B, Kylie? Rough coat, black fur. Rough coat, black fur. What about the phenotype for dominant R, recessive R, dominant B, dominant B, Jenny? Huh? Um, or this fourth one he wrote. Rough coat, black fur. Rough coat, black fur. What about for dominant R, dominant R, recessive B, recessive B, 80s baby? Dominant R, dominant R, recessive B, recessive B. No, Rough coat, white fur. And what about dominant R, recessive R, recessive B, recessive B, Shauna? Rough coat, black fur? Recessive B, recessive B. Huh? It's not black, so it's going to be white. All right, are we done? No, because we still have to find out the possibility. We know that we have four possibilities here. We have two here, another four, and another two. So, for there to be rough coat black fur, that's going to be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. For there to be rough coat white fur, that's two and two, there's four. There, is that a possibility yet? No. Thank you. So therefore, or we can do fractions. How many boxes do we have? Sixteen. Four, 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 four times four is sixteen. So this one is twelve out of sixteen, and this is four out of sixteen. Can we reduce this? No. Yes. Really? Because they're both even numbers. Can we reduce that again? Yeah, it's gonna be so why, why, why? Okay. So why wouldn't you? Which equals seventy-five percent. 4 over 16, reduce it for a fraction for other people that can't see that immediately. Huh? 1 over 4. One over four. Why you take the long way, Simon, which is 25%. Any questions? No. Hurry up. All right. While I'm getting everything else situated and set it up, go ahead with your group and talk over what you've learned thus far. Yes. And I want you to go ahead and get your blood typing sheet out of your basket for everyone to have. You gotta wait till somebody comes back. We'll talk about that in a second. It's supposed to be one of those sheets in there, right? Huh? It's supposed to be one of those sheets in there, right? It's supposed to be these. They're right there on the table. Oh. They're right there on the table. Stop trying to be slick. You are. Chappy, cut it out. Ten. Nine. Eight. Come on, get it together. I don't have a cracker. This week is please. I don't have no true friends. Alrighty. So, I'll wait. What we're going to do first right now is we are going to play a little game within your group. You are going to be considered a doctor um, with, who has to actually do blood transfusions. Leave that alone, please. Leave that alone, please. Now, in doing this, before we start taking our notes for blood types, I want you to think about some information. So, I'm going to pass out 
some scrap paper to the group. Designate a um, secretary of the group. You need to go ahead and get a group right now. That, all right. that secretary of the group is just going to jot down information as we go. I'll say stop. Jot down something you may learn or you may think have to do with blood type, and then we'll move on as we go through. Any questions for that? Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse you. Ah, All right, so <laughs> what is happening right now is you are going to be handling a car crash victim. And it says, so I can zoom it out. Hi, and welcome to the emergency department of this hospital. Your challenge is to save three patients who have been in a car accident <coughs> and need blood transfusion. It is your job to blood type each patient and give them the correct blood. Try to avoid making mistakes or your patient condition will deteriorate. If you make a mistake, you will get, get all five out of blood. I'm sorry. You will get all five out of five blood drops in the end. But if you make a mistake that's detrimental, your patient will die. 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 All right. So, here are your three patients. Now, you don't currently know much about blood typing as of yet. So your job as we go through is you're going to be jotting down some information on your scrap, not your note sheet. You have a secretary. You're going to take a moment. You're going to talk some things over. You're going to jot some things down on your sheet. So when we come together and take our notes, we can have a better understanding of blood typing. Does that make sense so far? So we're going to start with patient one. <coughs> So the first thing we need to do is we need to take some blood from patient one. Now, before we drop this blood into these three different containers, all right, what we're going to do is I want you to put your tray that you have in your basket in front of you. Put it on top of the white sheet of paper because we have to do we do have to see um, what's going on in that container. Let's do that quickly. I put a white sheet of paper in the basket. Put your tray on top of that. Now, as we simulate it up here on the screen, you're also going to have an opportunity to simulate it on your um, in your lab procedures there. What you have with you is you have three different blood types. Type O, you have type A, and you have type B. Then you have serum, which is what these re represent. Because what happens is, the first thing that happens is the blood types, your serum is made up of your platelets and your white blood cells. Your white blood cells is responsible for what? No. Nope. Red blood cells are responsible for carrying oxygen. White blood cells are responsible for fighting off diseases. So the blood is introduced to the serum because if the blood is not compatible, what does it mean by not compatible? It doesn't go together. It doesn't go together. So if the blood is not compatible, then your white blood cells are going to recognize it as what? Um, disease. A disease. And it's going to do what? Fight it. Fight it off. All right. So when we say compatible, that means mixes well, correct? Yep. If it's not compatible, there's going to be some drama or commotion, correct? <laughs> so therefore, it's not going to mix. You're going to see it opposite, kind of like oil in water. There's going to be no mixture to it, correct? Mm -hmm. Take a moment, talk it over with your group, and get some things written down on your scrap papers. I'm just going to change. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. What are we writing down like this? Anything that you can remember from what I just said. Is this for a bus? Simulator. It's going to be like oil and water. You can try different blood. All right, stop. In one of your containers, before we move on to this still, you're kind of in training for your doctor. In one of your containers, the smaller container, so container one. What I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and take Jordan's, actually not Jordan, I apologize, take Sasha's blood serum. Where's Sasha at? Oh, 
and put her in container one. Just um four drops. I'll wait. All right. So Sasha blood is in, or Sasha serum. Group for a moment. Look at the information that you have on the bottle. Talk it over with your group and decide which type of blood do you think you would give Sasha. Based on, Based on just your just your own knowledge. Um, type O. Type A. All right, stop. Don't be telling you what to do. Whatever blood you decided, go ahead and drop in there. In the same thing as Sasha's. Sasha's. So, we are now, we need to get through these notes, so we need to move, and I hear your voice, on. Our blood type is passed through your parents. Not, that's not what we're writing down here. Huh? Just one of these. This one. Okay. Everybody is supposed to have one of these. If you don't have one, come and get it. Come on, you're wasting time. There's enough, there should have been enough in the basket. All right. So, um, human blood type is passed from your parents. You saw the different bags of possible blood. One. Was there just one letter for the blood always? No. No, you could be either type A or AB. A, yes. Come get it. So therefore, the fact that you could have two capital letters tells us what about blood types? What about that, that allele pair that we learned from our notes on yesterday? So that would be what? If they both show up, that would be what? No. Think about our roses. Oh, co-dominant. Co what? Co-dominant. So human blood type is passed through co-dominant. My phone died. All right. That means two dominant can both be shown. <laughs> Not that extra talking. Any questions so far? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So, what are the four possible phenotypes for the blood? A. A. B. A. B. A. B. And O. These are the physical assignment. There's no other word for it. So you either type A, type B, type AB, or type O. Your parents come together and it mixes. Now, there are some ones that are dom more dominant over others. A and B are more dominant. O is recessive. What that means that if there's an A or a B present, just like we do in regular traits, okay? Is universal. Meaning what? Anybody, anybody. Yep. 
can mix with any other type. 